Welcome all then to the webinar this morning. Hopefully you can all see the screen that's being shared at the moment. So this morning's webinar will cover, first of all, the terminology and the technology of what we'll be discussing, which is chunks and channel groups, understanding some traffic reports, how to configure the trunks, making the best use of um, what's available within Tiger 2020 for your business, looking at the reports uh, settings, and at the end of the session, I will take any questions that you have and try and answer them. So again, please feel free to use the chat window available within the WebEx session to send me any messages and I will answer them at the end. So the first thing we're going to look at is some terminology and the technology that's used. For some of you, you will be very familiar with this. For some of you, you may not be. So what we're going to just start with is looking at what is analog telephony. So analog telephony is sort of the older way telephony works. It has a single concurrence usage. So you can only have one concurrent call on this on an analog line. And it will also have a single DDI number to it. These are the older generations of lines. And it's just talking to you about what analog telephony is. So when we do come to some of the screens, you understand what the telephony for analog is. So unlike digital or voice over IP, it uses analog connections and you have to be connected by sort of two wire cable connections. And as I said, an analog line only allows for a single call. And in the future, BT have announced that they will be switching off the PSDN and ISDN in 2025. Now, that's at this moment in time. That may change as we go along. But they'll be gradually fading out all of the older BT systems starting in 2020. If you are an international customer of ours, the dates may differ. You'll just have to refer to your provider to find out when that will stop. And BT will cease taking ISDN orders very soon, and you'll have to opt for an IP-based business telephone system. So what is ISDN and what is available? Well, there are two types of ISDN lines. It really depends on the size of your company. But in essence, an ISDN will allow you to have either two channels or 30 channels. What this means is that an ISDN2 will allow you to have up to two consecutive calls or two concurrent calls. With an ISDN30 circuit, it will allow you to have up to 30 concurrent calls at any one time. Now, with an ISDN30, it also doesn't mean you have to have 30 channels. You could have, say, 15 channels of those 30 active. With, though, with an ISDN30, you can have a single phone number that takes you to those 30 consecutive channels inbound as well, giving you a bit more of a professional appearance. Also, ISDN quality is very high, so it gives you a very good high quality service or very good quality of a call. So going into the future, so the future now is that the networks are moving towards SIP trunks. So SIP trunks are now the new modern way of doing telephony. These are calls that will be going over a broadband internet connection. And you can have multiple phone numbers or DEIs linked to these SIP channels. And the great thing about this is, is if you move towns or cities, your number can also go with you. You can port your number wherever you end up moving to. Unlike with traditional ISDN numbers or analog numbers, if you do move to different cities, unfortunately, you would have to get a new number. So SIP alleviates all of that. There are also a lot of other benefits to SIP. So here are just some other ones. So you can have a lower line rental on DDI rental. So it's actually a lot cheaper for you if you have more lines. A lot of the SIP providers give lower call charges. So And they will even give you bundled minutes as well. And if you move offices, you can keep the same number, so you don't have to keep an ISDN somewhere and forward your number, causing more cost. You can start to eliminate the number of gateways that you have, so with SIP, because you can have more concurrency on there, then you don't need to have as many gateways. It's also flexible, so it's a lot more flexible than an ISDN 30. If you needed 120 channels one day, you could ask the provider to just up your SIP to 120 channels rather than having to wait for installations and delays and so on. So they're a lot more flexible. But also it allows you to make sure that you've got the correct number of channels available. So this is where Tiger will help you look to make sure that you've got the correct number of channels available to handle the volume of traffic that you're using. 
So we will use the Tiger 2020 Pro software to work out how many channels are required. So if you do move from traditional ISDN or analog trunks, the Tiger can help you factor in how many channels you require with your new SIP providers. Also as part of the training today, we will be looking at codecs. So some of you may not be aware of what a codec is. Basically, this is just how the compression of the call is done when it's sent through the internet provider. There are lots of different codecs available. Depending on how compressed you want the, the voice call depends on which codec you would choose. And there's some examples on the screen here at the moment. But as we get into the reports and so on, we will just understand what the different codecs are. And we can then help you model which codec that you would like to use on your particular gateway or particular channel so that you can get the correct amount of calls down the line and making sure that you have enough bandwidth available for those calls. Okay, so now we're going to go on and start looking at Tiger 2020. The first thing we're going to look at is configuring a trunks. We'll then look at some traffic reports, and we will then look at the report settings. So here is our Tiger 2020 system. And the first thing we're going to look at is our directory. So first of all, we need to understand what channels or trunk groups are available in our system. So in here, I have an example CDR source here, or PBX switch, which under the PBX here, what we have is the trunk group, and under here will be all of the trunk groups that are available on your PBX. Now, Tiger will automatically learn any new trunk groups that it sees from the CDR. So if you install a new trunk group or configure a new trunk group, then Tiger will automatically learn this as soon as a call has been made over that channel or trunk or channel group or gateway. So under here will be all your new trunk groups. So if I pick on the first one here and right click and go to my properties, there are some important settings that you will need to set on these front groups. The first one is how many members are available. So if you're running traditional ISDN 30s or analog lines, these will be either set to 1, 2, 15 or 30. So you can set these values um, depending on how you've got them set with your provider. So if you provision an ISDN 30 and have all 30 channels live, you would set this to 30. And then what the software will be able to do is work out how much percentage concurrency usage has been used on that line. With new modern SIP, you'll have to ask your provider how many concurrent calls that you have available and put that value in here for the number of members. You can then come in here as well and choose which type of line it is, so whether it's a trunk, whether it does incoming, outgoing, both way, whether it's just for DDI calls, ISDN, or it's voice over IP. You can type in an access code, and you can also define which tariff it uses. So in here, if you have a different tariff on a different trunk, then you can choose which provider that trunk is on just by simply selecting it in here. You can also choose which location it's in by coming into the locations and choosing the location in the drop-down list. If you are have international countries that are going through your PBX, selecting the correct country is very important. So to add new locations, what you'll need to do is go onto the Tiger server, go into the Tiger 2020 folder. You will then look for a program in here called TIG Setup. You will log into the TIG Setup program and in your locations what you'll have to do is add locations. Now be very careful when selecting correct countries. If you select the country incorrectly it will choose the incorrect time zones etc here and the whole reason behind creating locations is it will time shift your calls. So if you put the location in incorrectly, the time shifting on the calls could be incorrect. So as I say, to create new locations, you go into your tick setup, create your new location, give it a name, give it an area code, click add. Once you've finished adding all your locations, if you close that down here, just click yes to the prompt message. Within your locations here, You'll see now that I'll have that location available and that location's country available in here. One thing to note if you're running a call manager or a Skype for Business, 
you will notice that you'll have this device name and IP address in here. The device name is a trunk group that links the two together. So the description in your channel here is the device name that's in your call manager, and that's how the two get linked together. With, say, a Avaya comms manager, it will be the TAC code that labeled in your trunk group here. What you'll also notice in this screen is I have some configurable fields. These configurable fields just help you put in additional information about your channel group. So to create additional configurable fields, you go to Options at the top, Configure, Configurable Fields, and under Trunk Group here, you can see that you can create new ones by display this configurable field and giving this a description. So in these instances here, I put what provider it is, the ISDN number, the main DDI, the account number, and the account manager. This then gives you a centralized place where all this information is then stored, and you can come back and look at this information. Now then that we've configured all of the channel groups in here, so you'll have to go through these one by one and make sure that they're set correctly. We can now use this information that's been configured under the trunk groups to now generate reports. So to generate reports, what we can do is click on the reports button and we can now go and create a filter maybe to select certain trunk groups or channel groups or trunks. So to do this, we can click on the edit query filter. We can create a new filter. Let's call this Bradford. And all of our channel groups trunks are available here under the trunk groups. So now you can specify which trunk group you would like to see. So if I want to generate a report just on the Bradford trunk group, I would select just Bradford. It will then show me on my summary which trunk group I will be running a report on. Along with this though, you could look for say outgoing calls. You could still look for calls over a certain amount of cost using the same tabs available within the filtering. But the main one for trunk groups is selecting under switch configuration and selecting which trunk group you'd wish to run a report on. So when I click save on this, it will now go here under my filter, trunk groups and Bradford. This will allow me then to run a report just on Bradford. We will come back to running a report on Bradford in a moment though. The first thing we're going to look at though is views. Now, because we'll be running reports on trunk groups, you must always use the physical view. Okay, if you don't have access to the physical view, you'll need to speak to your Tiger administrator and they will be able to give you access to the physical view for you. So once I've selected my physical view, what I can now do is go and select my date range. So I will run from the 1st of January to the 31st of March. I will then come to my traffic section. So my traffic section is where all of my front info uh, reports are available. Okay, so there are currently seven reports available to us. And the first report that we will look at is the trunk group summary. So the trunk group summary report gives information about how many calls that trunk group has taken, received, and its concurrency of each trunk group. It would also give you what maximum capacity was reached, give you the number of configured trunks in the group, together with stats about the group occupancy, and you can also model bandwidth within this report also. If you do generate this report, it will also break it down by day. So because I've run this over such a long period of three months, this report would be quite long because it will then tell you on each day what capacity it's hit on that particular day, and it will also give you a breakdown per day. So, looking at this report now, it will give me information about my trunk group name, and it's also flagged here in this field, maximum capacity state. So, because my tester group has been configured with seven channels, so I said that was my maximum amount of concurrent calls that's available on that, that trunk group, it's flagged it as it's hit maximum capacity. So I'd be interested to know why, when, and how it got to maximum capacity. So what I can do is I can double click on this line and it will show me what those seven calls were that were active at that time. So I can see on the 26th of the 3rd, 
there were seven calls active that hit my capacity um, for that particular day. So I will know that on the 26th of the 3rd, around 3.50, I hit my capacity on that line. Again, with this Birmingham one, I may be interested on this. I can double-click on this, and it will tell me the information about those individual calls when it hit that maximum capacity. So here it's saying I have configured five trunks. My maximum concurrent calls on it was five, and it will tell me how long I was at that capacity for. So here, for these five concurrent calls, I was at five for seven minutes and eight seconds. So this means that I had five current concurrent calls on that line for seven minutes and eight seconds, meaning that nobody could make a call or receive a call on that line for seven minutes and eight seconds. It will also give us some model bandwidth. So what this means is it will calculate how much bandwidth would be required at the peak. Now, the way this is calculated is by selecting which codec we would like to, to use. So in here, we have the default set of codecs which are available. So if I want to go and change this to G711 PCA law, you will see that the bandwidth here will start changing based upon which codec we choose. So this will help us work out how much bandwidth we would require to handle the amount of calls on that trunk group at the moment. So this will help you when you go to the new SIP providers to say, right, well, this is roughly what we're using at the moment. It will also give you a breakdown of how many incoming calls and outgoing calls that that trunk group has provided, a total amount of calls, and how many minutes it's been occupied for. With this information as well, you can right-click anywhere on the grid and export to file and save it. Or as I was saying before, this report will also break it down by day. So when I click on the report button here, this report will be quite long. It will give you a breakdown per day and how many concurrent calls per day were being handled, the bandwidth required for that day and how many calls, etc. there were. It will also put an asterisk against there each day that it hit maximum capacity. Again, maximum capacity is based upon you configuring the trunk groups to have the correct amount of channels within directory definition. If it's not set up correctly, you may notice that they will always be flagged as a maximum, or some may not be. Uh, just so you're also aware, it does also flag which codec you selected in the report as well. So if you can't remember which one you selected, when you do generate the report, it will tell you that information. So this report is very useful for when you do move over to SIP, for those that you that haven't, or for those that have moved over, maybe to monitor that SIP per channel is working as you expected. So you may be looking at the maximum concurrent calls, say you've purchased 300, and you're only getting up to 50, you could maybe speak to the provider and say, look, can we drop this down to maybe 100, saving the company money in the long run. So some of the other reports that are available is maybe a trunk summary report. So trunk summary reports, we will run this on a particular trunk. So because I've created a filter earlier for Bradford, I'm just going to go off and run the report on that. So in here, it will show you which trunks, whether they're being used or not. So I can see my Bradford one, you know, over three months has only taken 19 calls, which obviously is not very many calls. So I could look at the report here and go, well, that's not really that used. So maybe it's something that we don't need anymore. So we could go and talk internally, find out if there's a better way of uh, utilizing that line or removing it and maybe getting their calls to come over to a different route out of the business. Whereas if we look at, say, the Birmingham trunk, we'll notice this one's a bit more busier. And we can also see what, what the usage is on that line. So we could look at this and go, oh, this is a bit more of a busier line, and we can see what type of calls it's handling. We can see this has handled 3,383, so it's a bit more of a busier line than the one before. We may then look at the trunk utilization maybe for Birmingham. So the trunk utilization report shows the voice over IP traffic in 15 minute slots. This can then also be customized as well. 
based upon either the amount of trunks configured or the amount of trunks used in the call record. So what we're saying is on this line here, we can configure it to say, well, actually, let's look, see if we've got eight trunks on here. What is the occupancy on here? So out of the eight lines available, the percentage occupancy between uh, 1015 and 1030 is only 3.28%. So we're not really utilizing those lines. We can look at the occupancy of the line as well between those times and the total amount of calls it's handling. Now, this will be per day as well. So you would probably run this report on a singular day rather than over a longer period. It would also give you a graph to show what your occupancy is over that time. Now, obviously, if the graph is up to the top here at 70%, it means that you may be over-occupying your trunks and you may need to purchase more trunks. The trunk busy period will give you over a long period of time. So I'm looking at the Birmingham trunk only. What was my busiest period on that trunk? So I can say which, at what time of the day is my busiest time for that trunk. So the reason for this could be that I may need to put a rule in my PBX to, to balance my trunks a little bit more because a lot of the calls are going over out at a certain time of the day. Um, and I just need to balance them out slightly better. Let's just wait for this to generate. As I say, it's best running this, this report on a specific group. The busy period is definable, so you can have it at five minutes, whether you want your busiest five minutes, your busiest 15 minutes, or your busiest 30 minutes. The statistics provided include the total and busy period occupancy, the percentage occupancy in the busy period, and the percentage of the total traffic occurred in the busy period. And then it will show a graphical display showing you which days and when it was busy. For some of these trunk reports, I would recommend if you're going to run them over a long period of time to schedule them to be emailed to you. You don't really want to be sitting and watching the bar for hours on end. So what I would recommend is, is scheduling some of these reports. They schedule them exactly the same way as you do any other report. And you just select them as a report type. You can select your filter like you would in any other way. But this way, you're not just sitting and waiting for the report to generate. It will just appear in your inbox with the information that you require. You can, when you set up reports as well, when you go into the scheduling, you could get the report to run, say, every week and get it to look back historically on the last eight weeks' worth of data, say, for an example. So if you're looking for peaks um, of information, then you can run the report on a weekly basis, but look back over a longer period of time. Okay, so the busy period report, if I look at the graph, first of all, you need to set how many trunks there were. So I think that in Birmingham instance, there were seven available trunks that were configured. And if I now look at my, click on my view graph here, it will show me when in the graph form, when my busiest 60 minutes was at the moment. So I'm going to look at when was my busiest hour on these trunks. So you can see visually that the time keeps swapping between days, but it's around sort of between 10 and midday is where my busiest time is, or it's in the afternoon. So these green bars here indicate where my busiest 60 minutes were. Now, these ones on the left-hand side here will be a Saturday and Sunday where my office was closed. Therefore, there was no busiest hour, so it just sits them to the left-hand side. But if there's always a line that goes linear down a certain time, you know that obviously there's a busy time in your office. and Maybe you'd like to have maybe more staff on to answer calls, or you may want to route your calls over to a different place. So also you get here by day the occupancy on the channels, how many calls, when was your busiest hour, how long was it at your busiest for, so it was busy at the peak for 21 minutes, and the percentage of traffic here. It will then also calculate, based on your GOS at the top here, how many trunks are required to get your greater service for your customer. So it calculates roughly how many trunks are required for that particular office. So in this instance here, you know, it's saying our busiest time on that day, you would need five trunks available to give good service to your customers. So finally, there's some VoIP utilization and VoIP qualities of service. So the VoIP utilization reports show the voice over IP traffic in 15 minute time slots. These reports can be customized so users can choose codecs, bandwidth, and compare different codecs. Now, 
Currently, only call manager data gives us the actual amount of bandwidth used in a call. So unfortunately, if you don't have that, you won't be able to populate the actual KPS. But the model KPS here can be modeled in the same as the other reports by selecting which codec that you would be using on that gateway. And it will tell you then how much bandwidth would be required for that particular site. You can also put how many megs are available up here. So if you've got a 20 meg line, and I choose G711 here, it's saying that for that amount of data, I would require roughly around 2 megs. And if I had a 20 meg line, it would be using roughly 10% of that line at that time. So this just helps you model this information. And again, you can use graphs here to look at what your model would be and what your actual bandwidth will be. So if you change your codec, what would you model it to look like based upon what's actually happening in the blue line here? As I said in here, if you have a call manager, it will also tell you which codecs are being used on your data. If not all of the other TBX providers, it will just simply say at the bottom here it was a default codec being used. But you can still, as I say, calculate how much bandwidth would be required using the codecs here. And then finally, the VoIP quality of service. Again, unfortunately, this data is only available when the TBX provides it, and currently it is only on call manager data we get this. What it will do is give you things like, during this hour, what was the average jitter on that line, what was the maximum jitter, what was the average mod score, and what was the lowest mod score. So in this instance here, you can say, oh, look, there was a call that had a mod score of 2.64, or on this line here, it had a mod score of 1.27. And what you could do then is run a call information report and go and find that particular call and find out why it had such a low mean opinion score. So that finally leads us on to one last section, which is the report setup. There is only two sections available within the port configuration for trunk groups. So under here, under the trunk reports, there are two settings that you can set. So you could say that the maximum concurrent time calculation starts when the trunk is seized at ring time for either outgoing or incoming calls. So this is for older PBXs where they're using analog lines. What we can say is actually the seizure starts at ring time rather than with ISDN and SIP where we get signaled that the ringing has started. So you may have to play with this setting on your reports just to work out whether it makes a, a large difference or not. But if you're using ISDN or SIP, these settings shouldn't really be required. Okay. One of the questions is, if you have under here, under trunk group, you may have a group that says no group. What this means is that your PDX doesn't give us a trunk group, but you will see the individual channels that are under here. So if you have particular PBXs that don't have channel groups, what you may find is there's a group in here called no group, and then all the individual channels under here. You can still do calculations on concurrency. Just work out how many channels in total you've got, and then set this to be the line number of members in here. So if you've got, say, 30 channels that are available on the PBX, you just have to set the number of members available in here to be 30. It's just unfortunately we don't get the grouping of those, so it will be a big sort of chunk of data together. The other thing that may happen is if you have to change the tariff, so let's say that you've got a new SIP provider and you need to change the tariff that's available, then you can contact Tiger Support or you can contact the account manager. We can send over the new tariff for you. This can then be installed into the system. You can then change the tariff here. And then you'll be available to run a recost then on that particular channel group by going to Options, Recost. You can then choose that particular group. Now you've changed the costing, and then you can do a recost for the dates from the date that the channel group went live. One of the other questions that comes in, yes, so on the Trunk Busy report, uh, yes, you will need to select or type in that you have 15 channels available out of your 30 to give you accuracy on this report. So if I just show you again, so 
So if you do have 15 channels only active on your ISDN 30, then you would set the option at the top here just to be 15 rather than the 30. So in regards to setting locations, the only benefit for this really is for international locations. What this will do is it will time shift the calls. So when you have gateways across the world, what Tiger will do is it will take the base time and then time shift them. So if you're in Paris, say, for example, then it needs to have an extra hour added onto the calls because the CDR will be sent to Tiger in local time. So it's really only applicable if you've got lots of international locations. But yes, you can use a configurable field to put it in or you can put the physical locations in. The only benefits of picking the locations incorrectly would be in Tiger Prism. At the moment, you know, this is really just for international sites. So in here, on the occupancy calculations, if you've got 30 channels set up, if you set this to 30 here, it will then calculate the occupancy. So in here, you would say it was based upon 30 channels that are available, and then it will calculate the occupancy for those channels. And that's the same in all of the reports as well. You can set them either on the report itself or in the directory definition. Thank you for watching. We hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And if there's anything else you'd like to learn about Tiger 2020 and its other features, please visit www.tigercoms.com for more tutorials and information.